In early August of 2023, Joan Tomlinson and I did a trip to Alaska, primarily to see the brown bears in Katmai National Park uh, catching salmon, but also uh, uh, to see a lot of other things. We flew to Anchorage, and besides going to Katmai, we went up to Kotzebue and Kobuk uh, Valley National Park. Is one of these your boyfriend? Not at all. Oh, <laughs> not at all. Wow. Dang. No, I'm gonna... <laughs> going right after. Wow. I'm going to let you up one by one. You can... First female bush pilot for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think we by my seat and I'm smoking. Let's get you guys to Brooks. It'll be about 20 minutes. All right. Okay. Thank Let's you. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. I think you're the coolest person ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, that one guy is cute. You should be after him. Eh. I don't eh. think so. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Here are a couple of photographs of Joan and I at Katmai National Park. My name is Ranger Gill, and this is the first thing you do when you get to Katmai. Are, are you here for the day, camping, or lodging? Lodging. 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 Okay, how many days? Three. Three, three nights. Three, 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 three nights. Three nights. Excellent. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about bear safety, what to do, what not to do, what I hope you will do, and not what... What people did a little while ago. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's almost unbelievable. Just unbelievable sometimes. What they they approach the bear or what they? Do? Pretty much. Really? Yeah. After we say not to. But that's what we're going to talk about. Um, huh. As far as bear safety for you and for the bear itself. So first things, when when uh, had you flown into the other area at the visitor center, you watch a 10-minute video. Uh, since we don't have a video here, we just talk about it. So three things, three key things. Bear safety, try to keep a minimum distance of 50 yards away from a bear. If you see it along the beach or something, 50 yards. But in this case, he was less than 10 yards, maybe 5 yards away from us when he passed. You can't help that. The one thing you don't do is, okay, there's a bear. So just kind of move out of its way. Don't get the, oh, here's a pair of, he's coming towards me, he's coming towards me, and you're only trying to take a picture. Oh, Don't do that. Because that, that can, it can cause harm to you, and then uh, if a bear does something to you, then we have to put the bear down because they become a nuisance. Oh, so we don't want to do that, guys. If you should come across, use that person as an example of what not to do. Here's an aerial photograph and a map of uh, Brooks Camp where we're going to be. The red is Brooks Falls, where the bears are. The yellow is Brooks Camp, where we'll be staying most of the time. And on the map, uh, Brooks Falls is on the left, and Brooks Camp is on the right. Going to our room, our cabin. The lady's carrying our luggage up ahead. Here's room 31, which we are assigned to at Brooks Camp. Two bunk beds a uh, wash basin, a tiny shower there, and a commode area. And uh, it's not too bad, except I can't sit there because my head hits the top. Same for Joan over there. And uh, the worst thing though, is these walls are incredibly thin. You can hear everything. People are saying on both sides, and they recognize it by having this uh, notice that the building was barged here from King Salmon and I noticed that the building has no soundproofing or insulation. 
Well, here's the trail uh, to Brooks Falls viewing platform, which Joan and I have paid a lot of money to get to. Uh, it's around four o'clock on Sunday, and uh, supposedly there are some bears uh, uh, out here. We already saw one bear as we were landing, but we shall see. Uh, it's obviously a uh, world-class tourist attraction, uh, totally booked up, uh, and as I mentioned, very, very expensive. After over a mile of walking, uh, there's this long, elevated boardwalk, but I think I can hear uh, the falls in the distance, which is where the bears congregate to catch the salmon. It's the end of the trail at uh, 1.3 miles, and there are bears down there, three of them at least. Here's the salmon that the bears are out for, uh, the uh, sockeye salmon. There are about five species overall. Four, five, six, seven. I think we've seen total. He wants a Snickers bar. Throw him a Snickers bar. Oh, that is close. That's twenty-five feet. Whoa. Closest I've ever been to one. like they just eat everything. You think they're eating their bones? Yeah. Huh. That strong stomach son. What is that bear going to get? He's trying to get it. He's trying to get it. Gosh, that's weird. Oh, he got, he got it. Huh. Yeah. Huh.
very old bear there. Here's the setup at Brooks Camp. They've got lots of these little cabins, which I wish we could have gotten. It'd be much more uh, quiet, obviously. Um, but uh, they say they're smaller. Over there is the Brooks River. Which runs into a lake uh, down that way. And up that way, maybe a half a mile, is uh, Brooks Falls, where the bears are. Although sometimes they're down here too. We are in these, uh, this building. Which, right there is our new room. Which, and here's the main trail, I guess. Uh, down that way is the uh, visitor center, Park Service Visitor Center. And uh, I think where the, mainly the staff uh, lives. Uh, in a variety of buildings and right there is the uh, lodge uh, with a bar and a, a fire open fire area for hanging around I guess and uh, also uh, where we have uh, breakfast lunch and dinner at very expensive prices some ladies in our lodge said that a bear and some cubs walked uh, along front of the building last night so the bears are everywhere and then continuing on down that uh, main trail uh, that building right there is the uh, office here's the front of the uh, lodge and there's a very tiny store on the other side of it sells just a few snacks you basically have to eat at the restaurant or the lodge uh, buffet and here is the boardwalk that uh, goes across the Brooks River right out there and then uh, you take a trail or old road actually up that way uh, to the Brooks Falls up that way we came from King Salmon which is over there about 20 minutes by uh, float plane away and up there's a high mountain maybe that's Dumplin Mountain I don't know there's out there's the big lake that the Brooks uh, River runs into and then it runs into another river I guess and ultimately uh, I think 40-50 miles or so is uh, the ocean. Float planes generally land right there although we landed back behind me on another uh, side of the peninsula another lake because of winds on the bridge over the Brooks River and down there uh, are dozens of salmon they're just hanging there getting ready to go under the bridge and face uh, the bears on upstream I guess I'm heading is uh, the uh, Brooks Falls here's the ramp uh, walkway over to the lodge and the uh, Brooks Falls is right up there on the other side of those uh, trees. That was the second trip to the falls and not nearly as many. It's uh, 10 o'clock and there's only one right there and then one on the other side. Maybe more of them will come out. He was out here earlier she said they he got two fish. He got, oh, Otis did? Oh, he got one. He got one. He got one. There he goes. Yeah, he got one. So he's doing good. He'll, he'll, he needs to bulk up. Yeah, he does. Because he's 38 and the uh, oldest bear ever was 30. Uh, I mean, sorry, he's 28. The oldest bear was 30. So he's not going to be around a lot longer. Here's a still photograph I took of the world famous uh, bear Otis, who uh, has won the Fat Bear Contest at Katmai four times. I think this is Otis on the right, uh, and uh, it's very unusual for uh, a couple of adult bears to be as friendly as Otis seems to be with the bear on the left.
There's a really interesting story uh, about uh, the two cubs uh, on the right here, uh, the mother on the left. The mother is known as 210, they give them numbers and uh, sometimes names. But anyway, the cubs are related though. The younger cub is one year old, is the son, the daughter, son of the uh, mother, 210, while the older, the two year old cub, is the, the cub of the mother's sister, so the mother's niece. Uh, and the, the sister abandoned the cub, and the mother kind of adopted the cub, so she has two cubs. Really interesting. And here's a really interesting uh, hierarchy uh, scene. The uh, 210 and her two cubs uh, are going up to the top of the falls, and uh, the mother runs off uh, another bear uh, that was uh, fishing up there. Uh, and they fight over a fish, and then basically the other bear leaves. And then, though, uh, the mother goes down to start fishing at the upper falls there. Right here, she's moving down the falls, but note the big bear coming in from the top. And he is higher on the uh, priority list and uh, hierarchy list. And so he comes down and runs them off. But they didn't uh, fight, they just uh, move down to the lower level. This may be the most dominant bear of the uh, year anyway at the Brooks Falls because he seems to uh, prevail in any confrontation.
taller than me, I can't get over her head. <laughs> We're going to go way back to maybe 1.5 million years ago. And as you can imagine, uh, this area here looked vastly different than what it is, what it does right now. So, 1.5 million years ago, that would have been the very start of the Pleistocene era, or the last known ice age here on, on Earth. Uh, and it ended around 10,000 years ago. So, around 10,000 years ago, those actual ice sheets and glaciers began to, to melt away, uh, revealing what we see today as Alaska. Uh, so you go back uh, around that time, maybe 7,000 years ago, people have been coming through this region for the past 7,000 years. On our third day in Katmai, we did a bus tour to Valley of the Ten Thousand Smokes, uh, the site of North America's largest volcanic eruption in 1912. We're going to stop at Research Bay, we're going to stop at the restroom, and we're going to stop by the Kettle Lakes. Uh, when we get out to the visitor center, you can have lunch, and then we'll have a hike. If you want to go on the hike, you can. If you don't want to go on the hike, you don't have to. A highlight of our trip was on the gravel road, seeing this uh, uh, lynx uh, catch, kill, and eat uh, a uh, snowshoe hare right in front of us. When you can see them, um, you'll notice that La, uh, La Gorge is kind of rounded, where Katolinat is kind of more less so. So this is a glacial carved valley. We did several stops along the road. The Valley of 10,000 Smokes is kind of top center, the uh, light sandy color. This is the view everyone was looking at in the prior picture, and this is the uh, ash, uh, about a foot of it, that was deposited by the volcano we're going to see. It's the real river. bus ride ended at a small uh, visitor center atop a hill overlooking the valley of 10,000 spokes. And just as we get here, the fog descends. Everything we're looking at is uh, barren down there in the bottom. Yellow from uh, volcano eruptions. This is the valley of 10,000 smokes. The smokes were the uh, vents left after the big uh, eruption in 1912 but they ran out in the, in the 1930s. Uh, the mountain that erupted is right there. 
there's a big cauldron there now and uh it actually uh i think that's uh the mountain that erupted is right right in there i think but that's uh uh, mount, uh katmai mount katmai there but the volcano beside it was erupting and somehow it underground uh, uh, got the uh, magna lava from Katmai and uh, it's three square miles of, of volcanic uh, ash and lava were deposited here and filled up the total valley for several hundred feet there deep all the way down there would have been a real sight for the first white guys to see it. There were only Indians living around here then. They were able to uh, move away and nobody was killed by it apparently. So uh, most of us are heading down uh, a trail uh, goes down into the valley of the 10,000 Smokes. Uh, the volcano that erupted is up that way. In 1912, the largest eruption, I think, in North America, that is in recorded history anyway, and left this whole valley uh, covered with uh, volcanic ash and such that hasn't uh, grown back yet. Uh, we can go down to a waterfall and or fireweed, beautiful, and or uh, the confluence where two rivers come together. I think I'm, that's a shorter trail, so I think I'm going to the confluence. Uh, something over a mile, maybe. So I think I must have passed the uh, turnoff for the trail I wanted. Uh, I've gone way more than the distance I should, and I guess I'm heading down to the falls now, and I don't want to go there because I don't think I'm up to it. So I'm going to turn around about right here. That's a one-year-old bear on the left, then a two-year-old bear, and then uh, the mother of the smaller one-year-old bear. And uh, the mother is uh, all 210, they give them all those numbers, but sometimes names. And 210, as I mentioned, is the mother of the younger one, but uh, the uh, older two-year-old is her niece. Uh, uh, 210, they're, they're fighting there, uh, which they do sometimes over food. Anyway, the uh, mother uh, uh, adopted uh, the older bear after her sister uh, basically abandoned the bear. So now she's got two cubs. Interesting dynamics there. The mother, 210, catches most of the fish, although uh, the older bear, the two-year-old, now and then catches the fish, whereas the uh, one-year-old is still there.
that is Otis. Let's see if the mom gets to eat one by herself. Boy, she is tolerant, you know, she just... They're still eating over there. That's the smaller of the cubs, I guess. Yeah. <coughs> this is, I've never seen this many fish over the time. Yeah, more fish than I've seen before, yeah. too, for sure. They're catching more. More fish are going up. I'm not sure if I've seen any fish actually make it up. I've never seen one go over the top. I haven't either. Have you? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Cool. Well, they must, but... And I wonder how many times they have to jump before they... Right, exactly. Now, this one's kind of worthless. He pulls the skin off and, and uh, then lets the body go on down, the fish go on down the stream. Well, he's eating, uh, he's eating some of it this time. Does the big cub have the meat? Yes. Fish. The little one would like to get some of it. No, they don't share. For sure, even family, they don't share. fish I've seen since we've been here. There's eight bears out here right now, which is what we've typically been seeing around eight. I got a still photograph uh, of a bear catching salmon, but finally here uh, I got a photograph oh, of 210 catching salmon. And now they're going to fight over it as they always do. Each grabbing as much as they can. Oh, close. Catching those salmon, yep. That we think is probably Otis. He's doing pretty well catching, but the mother here uh, is just catching a ton. Fighting over salmon again. Mother and two cubs.
They're kind of sharing the salmon now. All three of them get a little of it. Back to the fishing. Well, we think this is Otis. Not sure if he's the one we saw before or not. That's probably Otis. Yeah, that one does look a bit. You think the one before looked that scraggly? No, he's there. They say that's Otis. That's Otis there. Well, they people. I think he's the one that was over there. Yeah. Well, maybe. He was over here, but it was not that. Yeah, we didn't see him as close, maybe. Okay, so that's. Yeah, that that's not, that's not the one before. So this is Otis, we think. Maybe Otis had to give up his spot when this. Yeah, maybe. Right. The mother and the two cups. And up there is Brooks Falls. And we think that's uh, Otis right there. Yeah, uh huh. I think all three of them are here. That's the mother and cubs. Yeah. This is just amazing. Boy. I like this view. Of the hey, this, this is a great view. I mean, it, like that lady hadn't come up here. This is well worth coming to also. They're not too afraid of people, obviously. I guess because it's a national park. Grouse. We wondered what these uh, wire cables along the railing uh, along this walkway are for and Ranger today told me they are to keep birds away. The birds land and it kind of keeps them from sitting uh, very well and uh, so they don't land and mainly they don't poop all over the walkway which is the problem. Lots of wilderness uh, in this park, obviously. And the salmon, uh, as I think I mentioned, uh, gather here and uh, uh, stage, they call it, and then go upstream to uh, uh, the Brooks uh, River and the falls are up there and then you're going up the river to a uh, Brooks Lake I think it is and interestingly uh, there's not as many fish here not as many salmon as there were actually when we came across so maybe maybe uh, the reason there's so many fish up at the Brooks Falls being caught uh, is uh, that all these uh, decided to go up uh, on up river Oh, 
our bush flight to King Salmon was, of course, a float plane, but we landed on the runway and noticed those uh, wheels on the bottom of the floor. So that's the ace uh, plane that's going to take us to Anchorage. And there's uh, the Otter uh, turboprop wheeled and float plane that uh, took us to Brooks Camp and brought us back.